Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Steve. And we've just finished playing the two-player abstract game Tellstones: King's Gambit, uh, which is from the people who did League of Legends, actually. Uh, and I will say, production quality in this game is excellent. We have these really thick, solid discs, uh, and essentially, it's a memory game. So uh, in this game, there's a few different things, sort of actions you can take, and we take it in turns. Um, so I might start off by telling Steve which stone to place. So I would say, Steve. Place the shield. And he puts it somewhere on the mat, and then it's his go. Uh, Jonathan, place the sword. The sword. So I can decide to put it here or here. I'm going to put it there. Steve, place the hammer. Mm. Steve's go. Uh, Jonathan, place the knight. Oh, okay. So I'm actually going to put that here. Now, something else you can do is you can tell them to hide a stone. So I would say, Steve, hide the sword. And at this point, I'm trying to remember that this is a sword. Uh, Jonathan, place the scales. Okay, I will put that there now. Let's remember that's a sword. Steve, hide the hammer. So he flips that over. Jonathan, swap these two. So that's something else you can do when they're there, you can swap them. Now, generally, you only want to swap them when you're hidden. So I have to remember this is sword and was it hammer here? So I swap these around. So that goes in that position. This goes in that position. Uh, Steve, hide the knight. Jonathan, swap these two. Oh my goodness. Now, it's difficult to remember. Was the sword over here? And then we have, we have to swap it with this. Is that the knight? So that goes there. And then was that the, the sword and what was that again? Was it or the hammer? Oh my goodness. Right. Um, Something else you can do, though, is you can peek at a stone. So if you've forgotten, it's like, I can't remember what this one is. I'm just going to take my turn, and I'm going to look at it. Ah, uh, that was the hammer. Okay. So, Steve, your go. Uh, Jonathan, place the crown. All right, let's stick the crown on that end. Now, something else you can do is you can challenge. So I might think at this point, Steve has forgotten what this is. So I say, Steve, tell me what that is. It's the sword. And then we have a look, don't we? And, oh, he was right. So, because he's right, he gets a point. And we just track here. And essentially, it's the first person to get three points wins. Um, but something else you can say is, let's imagine it's later on in the game and we've placed all these tiles and they've been talked around a lot. Uh, one of you can boast. And you essentially say, I think I know all the hidden symbols. So if you think you've remembered all the different symbols in the correct order, you say, I'm boasting, I know them all. And Steve has one of three options. He either says... I yes. believe you have a point. That's great, and then I just get a point. Now, I could have been bluffing, obviously, but in theory, I think I know them all. Or he can say, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, prove it. And then I have to go through and name them all, and we flip <laughs> no, them all in over. In any order. You can choose which order you do them in. Yes, but I have to get them all, don't yeah. I? So you can say, this is a sword, and this is a knight, and then you can get your certain ones out of the way, and then you've got a better <laughs> yeah. chance of the rest. Okay, so if you manage to correctly name them all, then you just win the game. That's it. Or, however, if you're wrong, you lose the game. So it's not about first to three, you just, it ends at that point. Uh, however, the final thing is that if I say, I think I know them all, Steve can say... So do I. Oh, so it has this third option here. I don't care, I know them too, and then it kind of flips it round. So now, either I let Steve try and get them all... Or concede a point. In which case, he wins, or if he fails, I win. Or I can just say, okay, I believe you, you do know them, and then he will get one point. Um, and it's the first, as I say, to three, or if you do the boast and kind of win or fail, then the game can end and someone can win that way. What do we think? So, I'm just going to take my mask off. So this is... Um, this this isn't a game. This, this is a sort of thing you'd see in a gift shop dedicated to League of Legends. Basically, if you went into a Harry Potter shop, you'll see lots of Harry Potter memorabilia, some of which claims to be a game, but basically it's got Harry Potter stuff printed on this. This was uh, given given to me under the guise of it's the same people who do Mechs and Minions, and I was massively disappointed. And this comes from this is basically a memory game, and I uh, I have a good memory. I can memorize a deck of cards. I, I you know I that is a, this is the sort of thing that in theory I'm good at. I just don't enjoy it because what will happen is I'll play against Matt, who's also got a very good memory, and we'll sit there for quite a while, quite a while, quite a while until one of us goes. Well, I still know the ball, and the other one goes, well, so do I. And, like, I mean, what do you do? Or, on the converse, you play against someone with not a good memory, and you just beat them. You just, they just can't beat you. Um, and it's so uninspiring to play this game that in the rules, they even say you can distract your opponent 
you can you can ch throw words at them. You go sword, knight, knight, sword, or whatever, and chuck words at them. Well, that's not what I want in a game. I don't want this to be that sort of game. This, if if you've got a memory game, if you're going to do a memory game, it needs to be deep in thought, chess-like, you know, concentration, silence. Because if it's just a, a game of who can distract the most, that's even worse. So to have that in the rules in a game which should be like a tactical memory game I just I don't know what they're trying to do to market this in the board game category this is not a game I'd want to stock in our shop this is a game I'd like to see as a stocking filler at Christmas for people who like League of Legends or in a gift shop for that sort of thing because the quality of the game is good apart from the kind of the felt mat potentially uh, it seems a bit weird but I guess they're trying to fill in the metal tin's lovely the these tokens are lovely they're like excellent backgammon style tokens and it just feels like there's Although it's a memory game and it's something I like, there's no game here. Rating? A generous two. <laughs> okay, I have to say I agree with everything that Steve said. Okay, personally, I don't enjoy playing this, and I'm kind of I'm trying to think who would enjoy playing this. Is there a market out there for this kind of game? And I think the stocking filler is the right sort of thing. It's very much the kind of game I could see in a stocking filler. And actually, if you introduced it to children, I think it would work quite well, because they are not going to be able to remember seven things when you mix them up in a line, and they would probably get some enjoyment out of it. I have to say, I don't think it would last that long. It's not the kind of game that's going to see a lot of replayability in that sense. Um, but yeah, the component quality is excellent. And as a small gift, if it doesn't cost too much, I think it's OK. But it's the sort of thing, as a game, is not going to last. It's not something you're going to want to come back to and play again. So I also, I think two is about the right <laughs> mark for this one. As I say, unless you're buying it for kids who like League of Legends, then maybe that would appeal. So there you go. That is our opinions. Thanks very much for watching. That was Tellstones King's Gambit.